Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organi organizing staff uh, of this confer conference, uh, Philippe, Mark, and Philippe, uh, for the invitation. Uh, and then second, I am sorry, but I'm going to read my notes because my English is not perfect. <laughs> Uh, now I would like uh, to present you an approach that I have uh, done for my PhD to ameliorate the using of walking survey data. Uh, the walking survey allows archaeologists to discover above ground structures and artifacts of all kinds betraying the presence of an occupation or old human activity. The found material and the observed structure allows, after study, the gathering of the information of the function, the speciality, and the chronology of the explored archaeological sites. The walking survey, realized in a systematic and continuous way, especially, enables the archaeologist to visualize over the whole territory the number of sites, their functions, their dimensions, and their dating to perceive the organization and the dynamics of the populating of a space at, the, at a given moment or in the long durée. In addition to the fact that their quality are strongly conditioned by various processes, the data stemming from walking surveys present a major problem due to the nature of this method of investigation. The observation of structures and the collection of on-surface materials does not allow to investigate the internal story of the sites which can sometimes experience several phases of evolution. It has consequences for the visual visualization and the understanding of the old settlements. As we shall see, a line of question questioning cannot be handled and problems occur during the spatial analysis. This contribution shall propose solutions to qualify and improve the study of the settlements based on walking survey data. For this purpose, the information stemming from archaeological excavations in which they can reveal the integrate story of housing environment is used to create a model. The use of this type of data in the study of the system of ancient occupation of the Plateau Lorrain indeed allows to bring tools to improve and balance analysis based on the results stemming from walking survey. To illustrate my subject, subject, I'm going to speak to you about the application of the method that I, that I apply to, uh, to two of my zones of study which I analyze within the framework of my PhD. They are situated in France between the, the, uh, the Rhine and the Moselle Valley on the Plateau Lorrain, and they are two regions know very well archaeology by both walking survey and excavation. Of primary importance is to explain the specificity of the signal supplied to the research by the result of the walking survey to understand well the origin and the nature of the problem coming out of this data. It is also advisable to determine the repercussions which engendered this, bia this bias on the study of the ancient settlements to propose adapted solutions. The walking survey only permits collection on of the present evidence on the ground, building materials and artifacts on the various states of the explored site are mixed. The stratigraphic information which enables the restoration of the evolution of a site is thus absent, unlike information from an excavation. The collected vestige provides information on the used materials, the present evidence, the surface, but they are contract in a flattened set removed from the chronological evolution of the site, which underwent several phases of evolution. This method of investigation to offer a summarized and fixed image of the site. Furthermore, because these data lack a real temporal dimension, the result of the field walking produce a linear signal, like you can see here. So we can see the, the walking survey that, are li that um, survey data like a snap entities. It is thus not possible to redway exactly unlike the excavation who made as span entities the varied stage of the story of an site, creation, expression, peak diverse function in time, decline and abandonment. What are the consequences of problems on the study of the spatial dimension of the settlement? The mo to model the organization and the spatial temporal dynamics of a system of settlement, it is advisable to characterize the present sites in the zone of study. For that purpose, the ideal is to detain the information on the characteristic of each of the four phases for all the occupations. 
The perfect situation thus is to compile data, settlement the attribute and chronology, forming a three dimensional cube such is matrix of geographical information of BGL Berry. However, this ideal configuration can be offered only by information stemming from excavations. The data from prospecting, as present above, do not possess full temporal dimension. The offer generally only three-dimensional chronological element. The data of appearance, the data of disappearance, and the duration of the existence. With the data of walking survey, the researcher are thus not capable of restoring the diverse characteristic of the various phases of evolution of a settlement during all the duration of its existence, which places limits in the studies. The archaeologists are obliged, oblige, thus inevitable, to work on a summary of the attributes on the settlement without the dimension of time. This problem in the research and important elements are absent for the better understanding of the dynamics and the spatial temporal organization of the system of occupation, mainly at two levels. First of all, at the level and the temporal dynamics of the system of occupation. With the data of walking survey, as already specified, it is impossible to reduce the story of settlement to connect its various characteristic discovered to Brussels phases of its existence to follow its architectural, economic and social evolution. Let us take a settlement discovered in field walking existing from the 1st to the 4th century ID. During the creation of the typology using walking data, here's the typology, um, the settlement possesses virtually the same hierarchical white on this wall existence, while in reality it does <coughs> Sorry, it does not, forcing the same statue of its creation and its abandonment. The typical typological crea classification realized on site discovery discovered in prospecting finds her its limits. With this problem, it is not possible to perceive the trajectory of settlement in the curves of general quantitative evolution, so a whole range of the element of understanding of the global dynamics is lost. Without knowing what takes place at the level and settlement during the various general phases, the understanding on the temporal evolution of the settlements is incomplete. The second problem is at the level of the spatial dynamics. During the spatial study, if the analysis is made on a fine, fine temporal scale, a single century, for example, the, data pr the date problem can, make, can provoke errors in the modeling of the network of settlement. So, for example, the settlement endowed with a statue hierarchical height will correspond to the first century ID, like here, especially in a pole with regards to its neighbors, while in reality it may be as not important in the structure of the network of settlement at this moment. To resume, the data from walking survey is often from a real temporal dimension, obliged to work essentially in the quantitative and restrictive way. As discussed earlier, the result of a search excavation would correspond to a span entities is more uh, arranged and the resolution and the chronological and material level can be much higher. In particular, is it possible to follow the internal evolution of sites as you can see in this example? Just for example, in the first century, big sites like Villa doesn't exist. You can see here in the colon. <coughs> The villa are like farms and they develop only in the second century. To improve the static and monolithic vision of the data of prospecting with the aim of reducing the gap and the limit pre present above, the data from excavation, if present, can be exploited to create a model of evolution of sites. So we collect first of all data from all detailed sites. I produce a document where the story of every excavated site is represented by a line the length of which represents its life cycle, Puntu punctuated by events which mark the beginning and the end of various internal states. The realization of the typology of sites based on data of prospecting allows the distinguish of many classes of activity on the Plateau Lorrain. Each of these classes possess its own characteristic. By combining the attributes of every class with those of each of the phases of the excavation sites, we can affect one of the categories of the typology for every period of all occupation. 
Using this approach, we manage to preserve the typological trajectory of every site. With this, we can see that within a tip, practically all sites follow the same typological trajectory. This shows that it's possible to, to realize a hierarchical evolution model for each of the classes of our typology and to apply it to the habitat discovery in survive. This is a model per each class. For example, uh, Avila in the second and the first sanctuary is in the uh, in the first century ID is a little villa, in the first uh, century BC is just a farm. Then if we consider that sites discovery in prospecting show their optimal state, and if we consider that this occupation follows the same trajectory as the detailed sites, develop development peak then decline, we can restore with necessary caution the evolution according to the model which we established, as you can see on the picture. If, for example, if we, we found uh, in field survey a big villa, with the model we, we know that in the first century is a little villa and in the first century BC is a farm. Once uh, the model was applied to all of sail discovered in prospecting, the static vision of the data of prospecting is modified. It is dynamic for now, and the seed discovered by survey are now span entities. The model helps us to improve the analysis and our perception of the occupation with both problematic areas which were raised higher, the temporal dynamics and the spatial dynamics. First, the temporal dynamics. The curves of evolution of the number of now seeds based on data of prospecting allows to the investigation of the dynamic of the populating. The increase, the stability, or the reduction in the staff can be interpreted by various manner and coupled with other analysis to refine and elabor elaborate the understanding of the dynamics. However, curves inform use only about the evolution of the occupation in a quantitative way. In addition, it raises the question, what occurred in sites when a curve or evolution changed orientation? The answer to this question provided by the data excavation offers elements to complete or qualify our knowledge of the temporal evolution of the populating. With the picture produced previously in the right, the quantitative data could be confronted with data qualitative. Thanks to this confrontation, two repas can be quickly established. In the first place, when we observe the chronology of detailed sites, we notice small gaps with curves. For example, the detailed settlements are all occupied almost in again in the 4th century, while the curves of the number of occupations recognized by walking survey falls at this moment. It is probably due to the characteristic of the occupation of this century, which leave few visible tracks in walking survey, wooden construction, few ceramics. It is thus necessary to qualify this collapse of the number of housing of an women during the 4th century. Secondly, by comparing what takes place within sites with the profile of curves released from the result of prospecting, we notice that the quantitative dynamics of the number of activities is similar to the quantitative evolution of housing of environment in terms of development, stability and decline. When the network of housing environment densify in 1st and 2nd century, the detailed sites develop. They get bigger, embellish, and in case of some, are equipped with element of comfort, hippocos, bathroom, etc. At the time of the peak and at the end of the wave of creation, the excavated occupation stabilized. From 1st century, when curves are reversed, Sites decay gradually, their surface decreases and they become, over time, for the most part, small settlements, sometimes temporarily established in the ruins of the construction of the previous phases. With this approach, we can also see in the left uh, of the slide different elements concerning the internal evolution of sites. I will not say everything here, um, for it will be too long. But simply to say, for example, that some sites which have the same statue at the beginning of the Roman period, like here you can see, they have the same size, uh, same materials, take a different trajectory from the second century onward. Some will develop strongly and reach the village stage. Others not at all and will maintain the same statue 
to go their lives. Their different development obviously have questions, but this is not the subject of the communication today. Otherwise, the, the application of the model makes it possible to vi visualize the evolution of the settlement composition in quite another way. See at the right. Um, on the left, you can see the evolution within using the model over the century. The composi composition of the population is often the same. The approach does not add much to understanding the dynamic of settlement. To the right, he, uh, here, with the use of the model, we see a completely different picture of the evolution of the settlement. In order to better understand the evolution, we wanted to measure and quantify the settlement diversity. For this, we have chosen to use an index used in ecology, Hills Index. Its primary application is used to measure the variety of species observed in an environment. It is calculated from the Shannon Index and the Simpson Index. The Hill Index is here. Here is uh, diversity and here is homogeneity. With the model and the hills index used, we can see that in the first century BC, the settlement is very little dis diversified, and that only small and large form exist. In the first century ID, with the development of the forms, the first small villas appeared and the settlements began to diversify as hills index shows, uh, like uh, the curve decrease. In the second and first century, the population of every diverse so we see a pyramidal structure of society. This has resulted in the development or non-development of certain habitats. In the fourth century, due to the surrender of certain habitats on the loss of the statue of certain habitats, for example, the large villa received into small villas, the settlement is homogenized. In the fifth century, we reckon the same situation as during the first century. We can see from this analysis that the transition from the Latin period to the Roman period generates a strong diversification of the population in which certain habitats will become very large. At the end of the Roman period, with the decline of habitats, the population becomes more homogeneous. Spatially, the model enables the investigation of the territory in a different way. In the example above, we see that during the Roman period, the system of settlement show another morphology with the application of the model. Concretely, for example, with the application of a spatial analysis, the gravity model, the space trait on a hierarchical basis in the 1st BC, uh, BC and the 4th BC centuries comprise less and the node of network, mindsets, are no longer the same. These sites, for example, have not the same white, and the network are not the same. Are not the same. <coughs> the model gives another vision of the spatial system structuration and evolution. In fact, the central sites no longer have the same role during the whole Roman period. Thus, I could see that during the Roman period, the main sites were not allowed the same, and they are and that the effects on space could be changed. For example, a villa is a central place in a s of a space only on the second and first century. All in time. In conclusion, the absence of temporal dimension in the data of walking survey constitutes a real problem for all the study concerning the ancient settlements. Even if it's difficult to solve, it's not impossible. When data of excavation are available, solutions can be produced. Two solutions which I have proposed indeed allows to improve analysis in two ways, in the temporal dynamics and in the spatial dynamics. If the method of combination with we use again are to be improved and to be elaborated with more data, with more survey and excavation, and tools to realize the model elaborate with more, uh, start directly from a typology realized only with the different phase of this seat, for example, switch uh, the method. I hope that with the presentation I show the importance of the use of the data stemming from excavation when they are available. In this study based mainly on information collected in prospecting. The data from excavation can bring numerous elements for a better understanding of the syst systems of settlements. Excavation do not only have to serve to illustrate the result of analysis but can be used in connection with the data of workings 
data. Thanks for thank you for your attention.